Hey, Vortex. So, um... It was recently brought to my attention by somebody that I can only assume doesn't actually do stand-up comedy in stand-up comedy setting. Um, but it was brought to my attention that all oh, lots and lots of people are pushing back on the culture. No, the fuck they're not, kiddo. I'll just explain that for a second. Because you're just ignorant, you don't know, okay? I talk to comics that, that go across the country and, and they tell me the kind of PC guidelines that there are in the more liberal states, you know? Blue states. So, uh, I'm told that they can't say certain words. You know, this is obvious, but they can't say certain words. They can't talk about certain subjects. People don't want you to punch down, whatever the fuck that is, all right? Nashville's way tamer. But there's still, you know, people that get offended. There's this little black dude in the comedy scene that hates my fucking guts because, you know, liberties that I've taken as a whitey. You're gonna get that anywhere. You're gonna get negative feedback. But the thing is, like, I know that what I do is not for everybody. Specifically sheep. I'm, I'm not here to appease the sheep. I don't want to make the sheep laugh. I want to make the sheep cringe. That's my whole point, okay? So, if you don't cringe and you watch my shit and you get it and you understand what I'm talking about, congratulations. You are a better person. You are a better person for loving my ass, okay? <laughs> I know how arrogant I sound with this shit. But the thing is, I'll just say it. Everybody's thinking it. And everybody's acting accordingly. So... I say on this channel, what so many people will, will say, like, to a, a screen. This is why I hate social networks. Because they train people to take all the stuff that they regularly internalize and put it all on the internet. So... Any potential that they have to grow as a person because of this internalization. Any attempt to do that, you know, now it's completely squandered because they can just take all of their aggression and put it online. And I'm sure there's somebody out there, there always is, that will completely agree with them and stroke their ego and provide them an audience. So, that's why I think it's really dangerous. And it's not creative at all. Nobody's being creative. Um, but back to my point. Not to tear this person down, because, uh, you know, whatever I said they disagreed with, I'm, I'm sure it was, was <laughs> very obvious stuff that people just don't want to face because it's too daunting of a reality, so it's easier to just call me crazy. Um, but... I'm the only one that's, that's truly fighting back against the internet culture, okay? If you actually do stand-up comedy, you'd see that, that it's really fucking boring. And the reason why it's boring is because people are on the internet all the time. So they're not utilizing their creative potential. They're talking about dick. They're talking about pussy. They're talking about eating ass. I have to listen to this every single time that I do comedy, you guys. It's not edgy. It's not interesting. If it was, I'd be fine with it. If it was funny... Like, there are two comedians in the scene that have made funny jokes about sex. And, and I pulled them aside and I've told them that. And I know that it means a lot coming from me because they value my opinion. They value my opinion because I take more risks than anybody else and they know that. that that's, that's one of the reasons why I said the N word. Like to, to put myself on a different level. Because they're so scared. They're so scared to be thought of as, well obviously racist is like the worst one for whatever reason. But it's like all these other things 
Like they're trained, okay, I can't talk about this because if I talk about this, they're gonna think I'm this. And you hear a lot of people like saying stuff about Republicans, you know, talking shit about my man, Tucker Carlson, which pisses me all the way off. Even though Tucker works for Fox and we, we have to forgive, okay, we have to forgive. That's how much we love Tucker, okay? We are so in love with Tucker. Oh my God. I don't even watch him that much. I just really like his personality. If I like your personality, there's a lot of shit that I will rationalize, including being uh, on Fox News, okay? <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so, this person that criticized me, it was it was about how, oh well, there are plenty of comedians that are, that are talking shit about the culture. And, yeah, they're talking shit about what, the LGBT, like whatever they can get away with, you know? Dave Chappelle gets away with it because he's black, okay? That's the only reason why he gets away with it. Everybody knows that shit. Nick Fuentes is the only one that actually say it. But there are plenty of people though. It's like I've seen them. Uh, they'll say some joke where they're like trying to be edgy and then people don't like it and they'll just give up on it. And they'll be like, okay, I can't do those jokes. It's super important to do jokes that don't work, regardless of like how the audience feels about it. Because I guarantee you there's somebody in the audience that will really, really relate to that and be grateful for the fact that you took that risk anyway. Comedy's always gonna be a risk. Like, I really don't care about people's opinions. I know this sounds kind of uh, trash, like, um, it's a cope or some shit. But honestly though, it makes perfect sense to me. Why would I trust somebody that doesn't have my experience? Why would I trust somebody that has no idea what it's like to do stand-up comedy, especially now, especially in this arena, in this fucking shitty shit, shitty shit, degenerate ass world, okay? Why would I trust somebody's opinion of my comedy when, when they're not even a comedian themselves and they don't understand the rules of the road? You know, like why would I, why would I adhere to their opinion of what I do? But really, it's just because I say stuff that people don't agree with. And the reason they don't agree with it is because they're totally immersed in the very aspect of culture that I am totally opposed to. So I'm, I'm not the type of person that, oh, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not going to listen to what you have to say all because I don't agree with you or whatever. Like that's more of a reason why I should listen to you because there's, there's something that you could tell me that maybe I'm missing, you know? Look, 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 look. <laughs> I just want to show you guys that there's still hope. Okay. <laughs> That's the kind of shit that gives me hope. Cement truck. But yeah, I know I talk myself up. I think I'm so amazing. I mean, people should feel that way about themselves though, especially if they're living their life right. Especially if they've wrestled through a lot of shit and they've taken the time and energy to figure themselves out and pick themselves apart and figure out what works and what doesn't and what they can improve upon and what they need to let go of and shit like that. You know, like a lot of people don't realize, you know, because they watch one video or they, they see a little snippet of something that I say, it, it's like, you don't know who the fuck I am. You know, you don't know who I've been. You don't know what my experience has been. So it's like, how the fuck can they accurately judge you anyway? You know, because they're judging like a teeny tiny piece of you, uh, what, what they've seen. And if they disagree with it, they're, they're going to pounce on whatever they disagree with, you know, with, with total disregard for everything else. So, and if you think about it, everybody's looking at shit like that, including yours truly. <laughs> 